Okay, so this next tutorial is actually has little to do with the mapping technologies and it's more to do with CSS gradients. And basically what I want to show you today is how to make uh, CSS gradients that turn into transparency so that you can create a title header or a sidebar that seemingly or visually dissolves over your leaflet or CardoDB or whatever map, map server service you're using. So you can use this uh, tutorial to make on, on any map you design with any API etc. So what I have here is a simple HTML document and I've brought in um, an external CSS file of my own which is up here uh, and I brought in the leaflet CSS and the leaflet JavaScript library and as you can see basically we'll go to the design here I've created a div a floating div that um, is, is positioned at the top so this is floating on top of everything else as we'll see in my CSS I give it a Z index I think of 10 and this is where I've put a PNG with a kind of fancy looking title embedded it within this div and then underneath this and going further down is my slippy map so this gray box and also underneath this white box is a slippy map And at the bottom I put a a, uh, a footer div with a link to a really cool website where you can create your own um, gradient color schemes so what we want to end up with is something like this and as you can see as I I kind of move this map about the roads start to dissolve and disappear under the header up here the title stands out pretty well I should probably move the zoom bar too but hey you know um, I, don't, I don't get paid big bucks to be messing around with that stuff but to make a nice gradual kind of seamless fluid design and to do this I'm going to upload this um, my CSS and my um, but the and this HTML file so you can look at but it's a pretty straightforward uh, pretty straightforward uh, process in your CSS what you need to do is you need to create a div uh, with an ID so as you'll see here my header I have a div here with the ID of header and in there I embedded my title picture the PNG as an image and then in the CSS what we do is uh, we give it a width 100% so it goes across the whole screen we give it a height that is bigger than the uh, height of the title obviously but not too much bigger and then we have to give it a Z index the Z index is basically the vertical positioning of elements on your HTML page now it, uh, I think the default is zero so anything higher than that is going to be on top of the default so I just put 10 you could put 10 million if you wanted to it wouldn't matter and then um, I centered it, I'm not really sure if that was necessary. Position absolute, so basically keep it where it is, no matter what people do scrolling around the page. Float top, keep this div um, at the top. And so basically move it up to the top. Finally, background color. This is where it starts to get interesting. You always want to have a default background color. And so here I have black. And the reason you do this is if a browser cannot interpret or read any of the following gradient code, and it's it's somewhat cutting edge, if you will, although almost every browser now can read it, but if someone's using Internet Explorer 7 and it doesn't understand the forthcoming code, it'll at least give it a background color that you want. So in this case, I just chose black. All right, so then we go on, and basically it gets really complicated fairly quickly. Let's scroll this up. It's not as complicated as it looks. In fact, most of this is exactly the same with slight revisions. But essentially, different browsers interpret uh, or haven't, they haven't basically decided how browsers should interpret gradient CSS. And so different browsers have different ways of interpreting it. Now, I just ran a test, and basically all the major browsers, I couldn't check Internet Explorer, use this last one here. So this code will work in uh, updated versions as of February 2014 of Chrome, Safari, and Firefox. Um, this this code here will work. Linear gradient uh, to bottom, which means from top to bottom, and then RGBA, which I'll explain in a second, etc. That code will work here. Now, if you look at the other ones, it's very similar. In sen in fact, it's it's not even different for a lot of them. Uh, same exact coding, except in front of it, you give this this coding here that that basically shows a this coding here basically shows uh, informs the browser you know this is for you or it is not for you alright so 
the next thing you're going to do is you can just copy and paste this and RGBA stands for red, green, and blue and alpha. So what this is saying is from the top, red, 248, green, 244, blue, 232, alpha, 100%. Um, and this is from the, starting at 0%, so basically starting at the top of, of its height. And then you have RGBA, red, 248, same exact color scheme. One second, please. Sorry about that, student at my door. Um, so basically what it's saying is starting at the top, 0%, we're going to have 100%, no alpha of this khaki color. I chose this color based on the background color of my map, so it's the same background color of my map for land. And when it gets to 100% of the height, or going from top to bottom, which is 170 pixels, it will maintain that same color but go down to 25% alpha, 25% opacity. So it gives it that kind of dissolving look. Um, you can copy and paste those numbers in for all of the above ones here as well, just in case someone's using one of those browsers. And that's really it. If you want to change any of these components, we could, if we wanted to, we could go, we could really go nuts here and make it black and then let's just go to some zany color well no let's keep it black better not go too nuts but by just deleting these we can change I'm gonna change this down to alpha of 0.5 uh, 05 not 95 hit save and Then, as you see, it goes from black to 5% black here. So you can change the colors, etc. It's no big deal. Once you have the code once, you can just copy and paste it as many times as you like. Now, if you wanted to go from the, uh, instead you wanted to go from the right side, you could go right. And basically, this is just kind of experiment, you know, common sense here. If you type right in all these places, and really I only need to type it in the one place, but why not keep it consistent? Uh, to right, actually this should have been left. Well, well, so we'll hit save. And now it goes from left to right. The uh, So if you had a sidebar div, that's how you would do it from left to right. So play around with it. I think actually it's a really cool technique for making your maps seem um, more seamless and fluid. And uh, basically you're still using up a bit of screen real estate to do this, but you could put logos and search boxes and other types of things in in this area to fill it up and, and fill it up with a bunch of zoom tools, etc. And the, and when you do that, then actually it's it's not wasted space, and it also makes the map look a heck of a lot more fluid and dynamic. There's something really cool about scrolling and seeing stuff disappear, um, like slowly and gradually. All right, thank you.